In today's video, we'll be going through continuity and finding k. Well, here we have a set of equations, and we need to find which value of k would make this function continuous. Well, when a function is continuous, it has to satisfy three conditions. These conditions are, it's defined at the point, and here, that point is going to be x. The second condition it must meet for it to be continuous is that the limit must exist when x equals c, or here we have x equals x. So whenever we have a value of x, the limit must exist. This means that the value of the limit from the left is equal to the value of the limit from the right. The third condition which a function must meet in order to be continuous is that the value of the limit must be equal to the value of the function when x equals c, or here x equals x. Whatever value you have for x, the value of the function, the value of the function there, the value of x must be equal there to the value of the limit. So now let's go ahead and work out problem one. Well, problem one, we have a first equation which is x squared when x is greater than or equal to five. And our second equation says x kx plus 13 when x is less than five. Well, now what we can do is we can substitute five into each of these equations respectively and then set them equal to each other. Because remember, the value from the left and the value from the right have to be equal. Well, if you wanna think about it in the aspect of limits, which you can do, as you can see, hey, it's greater than or equal to five. So our x value, we're looking at it from the right side because uh, when you have a graph and you're looking at limit as x approaches five from the right, you're looking at it from the right side or from greater values. So we're gonna look at it from here. So this is gonna be our positive. I'm just gonna write a plus here. And then this one, since it's coming from the left, it's gonna be our negative values. So let's go ahead and denote it like that. Now let's go ahead and get rid of these. Now let's go ahead and substitute in five to each of these equations. Well, we have five squared times k, and then we have k times five plus 13. And we just did that by substituting five into each of these equations. Now we're gonna set these both equal to each other. So we have k and five squared is just 25. So we have 25k equal to k times five is five k plus 13, you can subtract 5k from both sides. We're left with 20k equal to 13. So now we divide both sides by 20. So we now know that k, we know that k equals to 13 over 20. So now we know that if we have a value of k that is 13 over 20, our function will be continuous because we'll have the same value from the right and from the left for our limit. That means the limit exists and our function is now continuous. Let's go ahead and do number two. Number two says, find all values of k that would make the function f of x continuous at x equals negative six, if any. So now to start this question, we're gonna look at our equations. We can see the first equation in our set of equations is x squared plus five x minus 14 over x squared plus four x minus 12 for x cannot equal negative six. And our second equation is just simply k for x equals negative six. Well, remember what we did in our first equation is we set the limit equal from both sides, but now we don't have a left and a right, we just have an equal sign. So we have k equals c, where we just have our x value. So now here we just have the x value and what the x value cannot be. So here we're just basically solving our top equation and setting that equal to k and then we're solving for k. So to begin, we can't really do anything with k, so we're just gonna primarily focus on this top equation right here, and we're gonna factor it out. So we have x squared plus five x minus 14 over x squared plus four x minus 12. Now, let's go ahead and factor that out. We can see our numerator can go to x plus seven times x plus two over sorry, minus two, over x plus six times x, x minus two. And now we can see that we can eliminate x minus two. So whenever we eliminate, that means we have a hole at x minus two. So we have hole at, well, we set our eliminated term to equal to zero. So if we set x minus two equal to zero, we have, we get x equals two. So we have a hole at x equals two. Now, we can also see that if we set our denominator equal to zero, we'll have a vertical asymptote. This vertical asymptote will be x plus six equal to zero, 
and our vertical asymptote is at x equals negative 6. So we have a VA at x equals negative 6. Now that we have all figured this out, we're going to look at our question again. Continue it at x equals negative 6. Well, if we have a vertical asymptote at a point, we can't really make it continuous. So here, down here, I've drawn a what a vertical asymptote would look like. This is what a vertical asymptote would look like. So there's no way that we can really make this continuous. If it was a hole, we could have made it continuous because we would just try to fill in the hole, and that would be equal to our k value. Something that's continuous looks like this, where you don't have to lift your pen or pencil. That really makes it continuous. You can just continue drawing, and you'll have a continuous graph. Here, you have to lift your pen and then go up to the second part of the graph. So if you have a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 6, and the question is asking us if it's going to be continuous at any point at x equals negative 6, the answer is no. So we're just going to write Na, or there's no answer. I really hope this video helped. If you believe it did, please consider to like and subscribe. I would greatly appreciate it. We do have an Instagram. It is linked below. Thank you guys so much for 130 subscribers. I look forward to growing the channel. And again, if you guys have any more questions or any more videos you guys would like to see, please feel free to DM me on Instagram or leave a comment below. Thank you.